our voices and say a hallelujah. As we raise our voices, Father, amongst the storms of what's happening around us, I thank you that we won't be moved by what we see. We won't be moved by what we feel. I thank you that we won't be moved by our circumstances around us. I thank you, Father, that we'll be moved by your word. And we raise a hallelujah. I miss what's going on. And we say thank you. Thank you that you are good. Thank you that you are faithful. And through it all, Father, I thank you that your word remains the same. The grass may wither, the flowers may fade, but it's your word that remains, Lord. Your word. And we thank you, Father, that you prepare our hearts right now. You prepare our minds to receive that what it is you have to share with us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Ravan. Well, good morning, church. It's good to be with you. I'm sure that your faith is stirred and you are ready to receive from the Lord this morning. I also want to just thank Apostle Andre and Pastor Jenny for this awesome opportunity and Pastor Kevin and Chantel as our lead pastors here at River East London. We really love and appreciate you guys and salute you for pushing the vision and getting the word of faith out there. So thank you very much. We salute all of you. So come on, give them a round of applause one, one more time. This morning, I want to speak to you a little bit about mountain-moving faith. Mountain-moving faith. You know, as believers, we have the same faith and the same spirit within us that Jesus had when he was on earth. And that faith that he carried, that spirit, that mountain-moving faith, we can operate in that same faith today. Jesus still said we could do greater works than he did when he was on the earth. And so I want to share a little bit this morning, a little bit of a foundation, and we'll go in, into a time of ministry. I believe that's where the Lord's going to lead us. In Matthew 19, verse 26 in the Amplified, the word says this, but Jesus looked at them and said, with people, as far as it depends on them, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Come on, church, say with me, all things are possible with God. So now you might be wondering, what is mountain-moving faith? Well, we all know that faith is a spiritual force. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. We all know that scripture so well, all right, because we're a house of faith. But what is the purpose of mountain-moving faith? The purpose of mountain-moving faith is to remove the things in our lives that hinder us. There are mountains that are spiritual mountains, they could be financial mountains, they could be physical mountains, they could be mental mountains. So spiritual, mental, financial, physical, those could be mountains in our lives that hinder us, all right? But if we operate in mountain moving faith, we will see those mountains move from our lives. Amen? So we're going to get into this a little bit this morning. Do you remember the story of the widow at Zarephath when Elijah came to the brook to come and get some water? And she was collecting sticks. So Elijah had asked her to get a cup of water for him. And while she was getting the water, he asked, would you mind getting me something to eat at the same time? Do you remember what her response was? I only have a little what? Flour and a little what? Oil. What did that mean? She was faced with a, a mountain, right? I mean, you're on your last straw. When you look at something enormous, something so big, you think, I mean, is this even possible? When you think of a mountain, people think of a physical mountain, all right? But there are mental, spiritual, physical mountains in our lives, financial mountains. And she was faced with this. But Elijah said to her that she must make him a little bread first, and then her and her son can eat. Because her words were, I'm going to make this last meal, and my son and I are going to die. Because she knew it was the end. She had faced this mountain but Elijah came with mountain-moving faith. He carried that. And so Elijah, once he had eaten of, of the meal, he had said to her, because he heard from the Lord, that her cup and her jar of flour would never run dry. Her bowl of oil would never run dry. Until that, that rain had fallen. And until the rain had fallen, her flour never ran dry. Her jar of oil never ran dry. Why? Because she caught on to what Elijah was carrying, mountain-moving faith. 
Come on, church, it's time that we start operating and using mountain-moving faith. So now you ask, how do we get mountain-moving faith? I want this. Who wants to operate in mountain-moving faith? Well, we already have it. We already have it. How do you get it? Simple. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. How much of the Word are you hearing? It's a question I ask myself too. How much of the Word are we hearing? How much are we listening to the Word? Or are we scrolling through our Facebooks and Instagrams and Twitter feeds and reading that Word? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Fear comes by hearing and hearing the lies of the devil. We are to build our faith, not our fear. Come on. So Isaiah 7 verse 9, I let Pastor Kevin share this with us in the week as a team, and I started stomping my feet because I was like, hey, he's getting into my message already here. Isaiah 7 verse 9 in the NRV says, if you do not stand firm in faith, if you don't stand firm in faith, you can't stand at all. And I asked myself this question, how are some of us even standing in today's world that we live in? How are people standing? If you cannot st stand firm in faith, how are you standing at all? We've got to stand firm in faith. I want us to turn in our Bibles to Mark 11. We're going to spend a little bit of time there quickly this morning. Who remembers when Jesus went into the temple and he cleansed the temple of those who, of the money changers and turned over the tables? Remember that story? The purpose of Jesus cleaning out that temple was of one purpose, his mission. It was to clean out the temple of the money changers and so that he was able to teach the word with power. His mission was to bring faith to the people. That was his mission. Today, I want to ask the question, and you can ask yourselves and answer it yourselves. What is in your temple at this moment in time? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Is what is in your temple building your faith, or is it destroying your faith? Is it growing your faith, or is it decreasing your faith? I love what Kenneth Copeland had to say. He said, the word of God starts working on the root issue the moment you release faith with your words. In Mark 11, verse 12 to 14, we all know the story very well. Jesus and the disciples were on a mission, on the road, okay? They were going to Jerusalem. And he was on the journey with the disciples. And in the distance, he saw a fig tree, remember? So what did he do? A fig tree should produce figs. Okay? But he had faith because it wasn't the season for figs, but he went over to the fig tree. When he got to the fig tree, there were no figs on the fig tree. So what did Jesus do? He cursed the fig tree. He said, may man not eat of your fruit ever again. You see, when you release words of faith, it doesn't go immediately to the condition what you see outside. It goes where? To the root. Because the following day, the disciples were walking back with Jesus from Jerusalem, going back to Judea. And Peter said, oh my master, look, the tree that you cursed, it's withered. You see, he was in shock because now he could see what Jesus had said. But you see, when we release our words of faith with mountain moving faith, words of faith don't just go to the leaves. Words of faith go to the roots. It deals with the roots immediately. Come on, church. We're going to be a church. We're going to be a people that deal with the word of God and go to the root of the issue. Amen? Amen? So faith can move mountains, but your doubt can create mountains. Come on, declare with me. Say that I am a mountain mover. I am a mountain mover. Hallelujah. Remember the, the story of the walls of Jericho? When Joshua had the instructions from the Lord, I mean, these are huge walls. We're not talking about M6 blocks that we use here at the church, or these little two by eight little clinker bricks that we use at our houses. I mean, these walls, those of you who've been to Jerusalem and in Israel, these walls are massive walls. They're not built with bricks. These are rocks and boulders. I mean, you're talking about walls that are 10 to 15 meters high, four meters wide. I mean, you could probably drive on these walls. That's how big they are. Now with man, it's impossible for that wall to come down because Joshua got the instruction from the Lord that I have given you the city of Jericho and everything within it. That's impossible with the army he had and with the mountain of that wall he had to face. But with God, 
all things are possible. You see, Joshua went in with mountain-moving faith, and he went in to conquer it. We all know that they marched around the walls for six days, once a day, with the priests in front, with the trumpets, and with the Ark of the Covenant, and all the people following. I'm rushing through the story because of time. I'm sure we all know this. But on the seventh day, when they went around the walls, they marched seven times. What happened on the seventh time they marched around the wall? What is the instruction that they were given? They were to shout. And when they shouted the hallelujah, whatever the shout was, what happened? The walls came crumbling down. Come on, church, it's about time we start raising our voices and saying a hallelujah to Jesus. It's about time we start raising our voices and saying thank you to the Lord for what he's done and for what he's about to do. It's about calling those things that are not as though they were. Look at the dome we currently see right now. Do you think back in 1997 when people heard the message, when Pastor Andre shared the vision back in guilt the other days, I wished, when I heard about the vision when I first joined the church, I wished I was a part of this ministry from the beginning. I wished with everything. I felt so bad that I wasn't part of it. Because when I got involved, my heart was for the vision, and it still is. But how many of those people saw a mountain and said, oh my goodness, this is ridiculous, this is impossible, I'm leaving. How many naysayers were there? How many doubters were there? How many people had fear grip them and run? Only a handful remain today. Some of them are seated here today. Look what the Lord has done. What seemed like a mountain, what seemed impossible. Ask Lute Apostle Andre and Pastor Jenny. They stood firm in faith, operating and using mountain-moving faith. And today we see we are almost at the completion of that dome. And we're going to call forth the same way that Joshua marched around those walls. When we spend time in there praying for that auditorium, for that arena, we're going to call those things that are not as though they were with our faith. Because faith got us that far, and faith's going to get us further. Amen? Amen. This is the spiritual law of faith. I'm sure we all know this. It's to read the Word, believe the Word, speak the Word, and act on the Word. We need to be spending time in the Word, reading, then believing it, then speaking it, then acting on it. We have to take action. I love what Kenneth Copeland had to say as one of his most powerful statements. It's the invisible power of faith that will draw that which is inside of you out of the kingdom and manifest it in your hand. It's faith. And we're going to use mountain-moving faith for that. One of the mountains in our lives... For myself and Jazan, you know, I'll bring it back to, I want to be real with you. Is that a, can we be real just for a little bit? For those of you watching on live stream, watching on Faith TV, this was a mountain that we were faced with personally. And we had purchased our home a few years ago, and we were waiting for our rates and taxes bill to come the first month. Didn't come. We phoned the department and asked them. Second month, didn't come. Third month, didn't come. Fourth month, didn't come. What does your mind start doing? One month, two months, three months, times it by whatever, five months, six months. You know, we were on the eighth and ninth month. Finally, we got a bill. This was a financial mountain in our lives. Because when we got that bill, it wasn't one month of rates and taxes to pay. It was months that had accumulated of rates and taxes to pay. At the end of that bill, what does it say? You have 14 days to make the payment. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't... I mean, we are, I'm declaring this by faith, we are all billionaires for Jesus, amen? And we are prosperous, and we heard a powerful teaching now. But back then, I didn't have that kind of cash in my back pocket just to go to the department and say, oh, here it is, yeah, one day paid. No, I had to stand on the Word of God. I had to stand firm in faith. We had to stand united as a couple saying, we're not going to be moved by this piece of paper. We won't be moved by what's come against us. This mountain won't destroy us. No, it's going to build and grow our faith, amen? And as we stood on the Word... Before 14 days were up, thank you, Jesus, he came through and he provided. Why? Because we read the word, we believed the word, we spoke the word, but we took action. We sowed seed believing God for that amount to come through for us. We didn't just sit there praying, Hyundai, Shandai, Kandai, for that amount. We took action. We took God at his word, believing him and trusting him that he will be the source. I could have gone to my parents probably, Jazan's parents, and asked them, and, you know, we're needing a little bit of money for this account. You know, we have to pay it off. Would you mind? We'll pay you off in a couple of, of months. That's not how we work and operate in the kingdom. We operate by what? Faith. 
Faith. And it's God's word that's going to get you through and see you through your mountain. Amen? See, you can change your world by simply changing your words. The words that we believe and speak release faith or fear, release love or doubt, hatred. You see, in Deuteronomy, we were told this, life, if we use our, our words, bring life or death, remember? Blessings or curses. It's in our words. What are we speaking? What are we saying? And we know this in, in James 3 verse 10, that blessing and cursing shouldn't come out of the same mouth. We should be speaking blessing. We should be speaking words of faith. We should be wor speaking words that uplift people. Amen? You know, God has given us each the same measure of faith. Romans 12 verse 3, we all know this. You know, faith comes by hearing and believing God's word. But do you remember Jesus' disciples had asked him to increase their faith? But let me tell you, you don't need to ask God to increase your faith. What we have to do, church, come on. We don't need to ask God to increase our faith. We have to just grow and strengthen the faith we have. We already have the same measure of faith. All we have to do is strengthen it and grow it. And that takes spending time in the Word, standing firm on God's Word. Now you ask yourself, you know, how do I strengthen my faith? How, how do you strengthen your faith so you can move mountains? There's no seven keys or ten keys, but I can give you some points that work for me in my life. Number one, we must hear the word and be doers of the word. Number two, faith is fed and grown by words. Number three, faith always comes when you hear God's word. Number four, do not open doors. Shut every door to the enemy. If you open the door just a little bit to peek, You've opened the door. Do not open the door to the enemy. Guard your gates, number five. Guard your gates. Your ears are gates. What you listen to. Your eyes are gates. What you see. Your sense of smell, your sense of taste can all be gates because they trigger all thoughts in your mind, which is another gate. We have to protect and guard our gates. And number six, watch who you socialize with. The three or five or ten closest people to you will end up making you who you are. If you're hanging around with people who are doubters, you'll be a doubter. If you hang around with people of faith, you'll be a faith man and a faith woman. Hallelujah. Come on, we need to get our eyes off the mountain, off the mountain, and get our eyes on the mountain mover. He's the one that moves mountains. He's the one that makes the impossible possible. Can you say Amen. You see, if we don't operate in faith, if we don't see faith working, then the curse is working. Where do you see this, Brad? It's biblical. Let me show you. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 2. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all of His commandments, these blessings will come upon you. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. This is if you refuse to obey the commandments and not obey what God has commanded you to do. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But if you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and do not obey all the commands and decrees I'm giving you today, all these curses will come on you and overwhelm you. I'm here to declare today, church, that we'll be a church that obeys the commands of the Lord. We'll be quick to listen. We'll be quick to obey. Because what? We have heard it. It's the season of activation. It's the season of acceleration. Are you ready? Is your faith ready? Are you prepared? Is your faith built up? Are you growing your faith, strengthening your faith? So when those mountains happen to come, before they even start arising and erecting from the bottom of the earth, that they are already removed. Come on, we're going to operate with that mountain moving faith. Oral Roberts said this, when you put God's word first place in your life, it will wipe out everything your flesh has been worrying about. You see, perfect love casts out all fear. And faith only works by what? Love. You see, when you're not walking in love, fear is on your mind. Fear is tormenting you. When you walk in unforgiveness, fear is there. Being frightened is just a manifestation of fear. If you are in fear, 
you cannot hear the voice of God. Worry is fear dependent. But let me tell you, we're not a people who will be worrying. We're not a people who are going to be fearful. Let me share this final story with you. When Jazan and I were trying for children, it took us, um, we were trying for children. We, we believed God that we would receive a child. But it took us a year, two, three years until we received our promise. We stood on the word. That was one mountain we faced, but we overcame because we stood on the word. But there was another mountain we had to face. Jazan was carrying Samuel, and she had prepared mentally the whole time for natural birth. But it came to a point where the doctor said, we have to take you in for an emergency C-section. What happens immediately when you hear that there? Fear. Doubt. What's happening? What's going on? You see, Samuel, the feisty little boy that he is, full of fire and faith, he wanted to come out early, okay? He started eating his own body fats and eating on his own umbilical cord. And so his weight had dropped drastically within three days, and we had to get him out quickly. And so Josiane was rushed in for emergency C-section. Samuel was born at 1.6 kgs, tiny. Rushed into NICU, into a ventilator immediately. And when we went in there, let me tell you, that place is not a nice place. When you see babies as small as 400 grams lying under bubble-wrapped plastic, whatever that plastic is that they use, medical plastic, that's not a nice place to be in. But let me tell you, when you're in a place like that, when you've got faith, faith will move mountains. And we carry mountain-moving faith. So we were in there, and we, we would go in there every opportunity we could, every minute of every day. Jazan would spend every day in that place. During my lunch times here from work, I went straight to the hospital, spent my lunch time there, read the word to him, tell him Bible stories, pray over him, I would sing songs. Jazan would be singing songs, come back to work, off to work, go back to the hospital. I stayed there until 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. So would Jazan. The hospital staff would have to kick us out to get us out. We'd just be reading the Word, spending time in the Word, standing firm on the Word to see that mountain move. Amen? Amen? And the worst part of it all is this, is the whole time we were in this NICU for the two weeks, there was one baby that passed away while we were there. But I couldn't go and tell my wife what was going on. She asked, what, what's all the commotion? Why are these people rushing in here? Why are they carrying that thing out? Oh, they're just probably transferring to NRCU2, bumping up, or maybe they're just releasing the child. If I told her, that would have put fear in her, would have dried up the milk production. I couldn't do that. But I had to stand firm in faith. Two, three nights later, another baby passed away. Same thing, I had to hold on to the word. Just, Lord, you know what? That's not going to happen to Samuel. We see babies in here on feeding tubes, on heart rate monitors, on all these different probes and tests and wires everywhere. Praise God, Samuel was only on a little feeding tube in his mouth so we could feed him breast milk. Praise God, because he is good and faithful. And let me tell you, Samuel sits here today, if he's not at the back, he's, he's in the passage. He sits here today weighing over seven kgs, healthy, fit, strong. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know what? I give God all the praise. Why? Because we stood on His Word, not the doctor's report. And the doctors were phenomenal. They were fantastic, and I salute them. But it's time for us, church, to take our eyes off the mountain and put our eyes on the mountain mover. We are gonna, we're going to be a church. We're going to be a people that operates with mountain moving faith, the same faith that Jesus had. Because why? We are a people who stand on the Word. We won't stand on what happens around us. We won't stand on any doctor's report, what the news says, what our friends are saying, what our colleagues are saying. No, we're going to stand on mountain-moving faith and get our eyes off of those mountains in our lives, those financial mountains, those mental mountains, those physical mountains. We're going to get our eyes back on the mountain mover. Can you say hallelujah? Let me tell you, you, you probably could be in a place of fear right now, a place of doubt right now. Maybe you faced with a, with a mental mountain, a physical mountain. Maybe you faced with a situation in your life where you think, you know, this is the end. But let me tell you, there is hope because Jesus is not dead. He is alive. And the word of the Lord, like we said earlier, you know, the, the, the grass may wither, the flowers may fade, but let me just remind you, the word of the Lord remains forever.
come on, we're going to be a people. We are going to be known. We're already known as a church who will preach faith and stand on the word of faith. That's how we operate. Hallelujah. Does what you watch and what you listen to, does it destroy your faith or does it build your faith? In 1 Peter 5 verse 7, in the NLT it says this, Give all your worries and cares to God for He cares about you. In 1 John 4 verse 14 in the NLT it says this, Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. Do you remember the story of Lazarus? Remember the story when Jesus got the news that Lazarus had died? Well, Jesus had told the disciples this, that not to worry, but to have faith in who? God. But the disciples worried because Jesus said, don't worry, Lazarus is only asleep. Soon he will awake. So the disciples didn't click that Jesus was speaking faith. And the disciples said, Lord, surely... If, Jesus, if Lazarus is sleeping, surely he will awake. We don't have to journey over there. But Jesus had to tell them plainly in red letters, Lazarus is dead, but he will rise. And so they journeyed over to where Lazarus was. And when they got to the house of Mary and Martha, when they got to the house, Martha was weeping and had said, you know, Lord, and this was a mountain in their lives. I mean, Mary and Martha's brother had just died. I don't know how many of you have maybe lost a loved one, maybe lost a close friend, maybe lost a close work colleague, and it feels like a mountain in your life. It feels like a void, a vacuum has just, you know, been there in your life. But when Jesus got to the house, Martha had said, you know, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. Does that mean she didn't have enough faith? If only you had been here? What are we doing about the situations we're faced with? Why do we have to always run to the pastor? Why do we always have to run to our cell leaders? I'm not saying it's, they're not meant to be there. They're meant to be there. But what are you doing about it? Where is your faith at? Because when Jesus was taken to the tomb, he said to Martha and Mary, where have you laid me? Where have you laid Lazarus? They took him to the tomb. You see, Jesus straight away was operating in mountain-moving faith. When he got to the tomb... You know, Mary was weeping. She said, Lord, you know, my brother, he's dead. If only you were here, he would not have died. Again, where was Mary's faith? But Jesus operated with what? Mountain moving faith. He gave one command, roll away the stone. And that stone moved away. The soldiers moved that stone. And Jesus walked to the entrance of the tomb. Now, for some of you who are here today, you might be faced with a business mountain. You might be faced with a financial mountain. Maybe it's in your family. Maybe it's in your business. Maybe there's a business deal you're faced with. Those of you watching on live stream, maybe some of you are faced with business mountains. Maybe you're faced with a mental mountain. Maybe it's physical in your health. But some of you sitting here, some of you listening, maybe you're faced with a, a marriage mountain, relationship mountain, a mountain with your children. But let me remind you, when Jesus said these words, Lazarus, come forth! What happened? Lazarus got up and walked to the tomb. I'm here to declare today that that business deal you trust in God for is about to rise. I'm here to tell you today that financial problem you trust in God for, God is going to come through for you in Jesus' name. I'm here to tell you today that that relationship that you trust in God for, those prodigal sons, those prodigal daughters, they're coming home. Hallelujah. They are coming home. Stand firm on the word. That marriage you trust in the Lord for, it's not the end. That mountain can be removed. It takes unity to see that happen. One can put a thousand to flight, but two can put 10,000 to flight. Why would you want to leave your life partner? For what and for who? Ask the Lord to remind you why the two of you got married and together and remove that mountain in your life. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, as a church and as a people of faith, we stand together and in unity, and I thank you for every marriage, those in this auditorium, those across the airwaves. Father, I thank you for marriages to be restored in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that you unite husbands and wives. 
Father, I thank you that us as husbands would take the rightful place in our home to be the kings, to be the priests in our homes. And Father, I thank you that we would see restoration in marriages. That the same way that we saw Lazarus get raised from the dead with that mountain-moving faith that Jesus operated with, that we would operate with that same kind of faith, that same spirit. And Father, I thank you that we would see the fruit of that as we stand on your word, believing you, speaking and declaring words of faith, that marriages will be restored, that husbands and wives will stay united, that it won't be common for children to see divorce and separation and boyfriends and girlfriends that children will see marriages who stand firm on the word children who get raised in the house of faith father we thank you that as we ask you for these things it is done it is done in jesus name in jesus name Amen. Well, there we go, family, friends, partners. What a challenging word. Mm. And you know, Tash, the part that challenged me is it's not just the message. It is when Pastor Brad and Suzanne found themselves in hospital and they had to stand upon the faith. There was no pastor. There was no cell leader. There was no one else. They had to stand on faith. And how does faith come? Yeah. By hearing. So the more you hear the word, the more you grow to stand under circumstances. So no matter what's happening to someone else's kid, no what is happening to other circumstances, you have to have the sufficient word and grounding within you to stand on what God has. And so that's my real prayer for each one of you. This week, don't neglect spending time in the word. Yes. Why? Because there'll be a moment where you need to stand and if you've got no foundation, you're going to struggle. I was listening to a student the other day was moaning about his sickness. And his sickness was flu. A little bit of flu. Didn't feel so great. And he was like battling to stand and take authority. And I looked at him and I said, how are you going to have authority over someone's cancer one day? If you can't even take authority over a flu. Where does it start? The word. Have to get yourself built on the word. As you get built on the word, you'll start to take authority. And that's what I so enjoyed. Pastor Brad was living an example of standing by faith. And that's what it's all about. Mm. Right, I just want to go one step back before we end today's message. Mm. And right at the beginning of the sermon, Pastor Brad, there were a few scriptures that were read out. And maybe go back to your notes yeah. if you took notes. But one of the scriptures he read right at the beginning, I think it was Matthew 19 verse 26. And the, the scripture ended off by saying, with God, all things That's right. are possible. Yeah. Okay, it said something else. The, the, the line before that was something about us humans. And then it said, with God, all things are possible. And I just sat for a moment and, um, you know, I, I get to deal with a lot of children on a daily basis. And I actually chuckled by myself because the first thing that came in my mind, because I often reflect in dealing with children, how I respond to Father God as a supposedly an adult who's got experience and brains and whatever. <laughs> and when Brad read that scripture, I just thought, you know, many of us say, yes, God, but, you know, that but. I get it every day in my life. Yes, ma'am, but, or ma'am, you don't understand, but. And this morning, my encouragement to you is stop the buts. Stop Come negotiating. On. Come on. God knows your situation. Of mm. course he does. You don't have to tell him that again. Mm. All a parent, we, not all of us are parents yet, but if you're a parent, you will definitely identify. When you give your child an instruction that's not open for negotiation, yeah. all you want to hear is, yes, mom, yes, dad. Not a but, not a 10 reasons why it cannot be done, or Come. five minutes or five hours to get the job yeah. done. Just a simple, yes, mom. Yeah. And I feel that... That is my that is my my weakness with Father God. Sometimes yeah. I just have to say, yes, Lord. You've got a good track record. I know the word of God is true. Yes, Lord. So my encouragement to you this morning. I know your circumstances might be difficult. I know your faith maybe has not grown to the point where you can even begin to understand how He can do it for you. But just start with a simple yes, Lord, yeah. and Come see on. what Father God will do for you. The only but would be but God yeah and whatever God said that's what you're going to operate on we love you we appreciate you and we know we're going to be back with you next week but may this be an exceptionally great week yes. as you stand Amen. upon the word love you 
Till next time, God bless.